Hey guys, how you doing? So I feel like a lot of people are struggling in this YouTube community and I want to just do my best to help. I am not a big YouTuber. I also am going through my own struggles here on YouTube, but I want to help the little way I can. So I decided to just make this Q&A about YouTube because I got you know, YouTube related questions in my last Q&A. Okay, so yeah, let's just dive right into the questions, okay? Um, so the first one is, please, did someone help grow your YouTube channel to have your first 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 views? Like Banta with NJ said in her life that she had Nello as her YouTube umbrella. No, I did not have a YouTube umbrella. I started YouTube blindly. So my answer basically is no. And I'm sure you're asking because maybe you need help. I was saying, just keep at it. Just keep making videos people need to watch. Not many people have that privilege, okay? Majority of people on YouTube do not have that privilege. So don't start seeing that and feel like your own is different. Eh, eh. Like, it's their own that's actually different, <laughs> okay? And you have to be happy for them for it because, I mean, it's, it's... I don't think anybody would have that kind of opportunity and say, no, don't help me. I want to grow by myself. No, okay? So it's their own that's actually different, though. The vast majority of people on YouTube actually got their subscribers, you know, by themselves without anybody helping them so just try make videos that people want to watch try new things just be more consistent and you actually get to your 1000 subscribers you might even surpass it before you know it okay so um that's my honest advice because some people just yeah that's my honest advice anyway how do i go about opening a youtube channel for my seven year old daughter but i am thinking if she's too young for it personally I have that struggle as well. I would have started a channel for... In fact, I actually have a channel for Cora. It's called the JD Sisters. Their name on Instagram as well. They have an Instagram page, JD Sisters. Instagram page is actually quite easier for me to manage because I'm just posting their pictures. I'm going to take their pictures. You know, they just post and I post the pictures, okay? So they have a YouTube page. It's called the JD Sisters as well. But I'm still struggling with it because I feel like Cora is too young. I'm not just young in terms of having a channel. I feel like I don't want to put that pressure on her to always try to perform for the camera. Because Cora, like you see, you guys might see Cora and think that maybe the way she behaves on camera is what I told her to do. No, Cora is actually a natural. The moment I bring out camera, Cora will just, Hi guys, so on my mommy's channel, this and that, like that's how she is. It's, it's even Ava that I might, you know, try to say, Ava, join your sister or Ava, smile, you know, kind of thing. Ava is not really the outspoken kind of person. So I don't even want to try and push Ava, even though I called it the JD sisters, because I don't make it about Cora alone. It's basically Cora's channel, but it's about, you know, her and her sisters, right? I know that Sophia is going to be like that. I feel like Sophia is going to be like that as well. So maybe her and Sophia will carry the channel left for Ava. She's not really interested. It's not like she won't participate though. She'll participate happily, but she's not the one that will come and you know, take over. <laughs> All right. I'm here to take over. She's not the one to come and take over. So, um, yeah. So for me, I still struggle with that dilemma of, is she not too young? But at the same time, the way the world is going now, people, people even younger are having their own channel. So I will say, go for it. Okay. I won't say, I won't discourage anybody to not have a YouTube channel. I don't care your age or your size or your whatever. Anybody who wants to have a YouTube channel should have a YouTube channel. There are so many benefits to having a YouTube channel aside making money, okay? There are so many. I've talked about it in several different videos. Just the fact that you're documenting your life, to me, is enough. It's enough if that's all you're doing on YouTube. It's enough. So um, I'll say do it. In fact, I think I'm going to start Cora's channel. Let this be a motivation for you, okay? Yeah, I'm going to start Cora's channel as well. Like I'll start posting videos there, but go and follow, go and subscribe to her channel. You no, know, her channel is the JD Sisters. I'll link it down below so you guys can subscribe pending when her first video will be out. Okay. <laughs> so the next one is I'm quite new on this space and I find it hard to stick to a niche because it isn't what people are searching for, particularly in Nigeria. Any tips on how to grow my struggling YouTube channel? First of all, you are limiting yourself to Nigeria because there are people that are Nigerian YouTubers, but they are audience are predominantly americans okay and they live in nigeria i'm not talking about nigerians in their abroad i'm talking about nigerians living in nigeria their audience is predominant predominantly not nigerians okay if you limit yourself to what nigerians are searching for you might be limiting yourself you might be stopping yourself from greatness okay so people that have things like hair channels in fact people that actually niche down are the ones that have the most um subscriber count subscriber growth and views from other countries because you are in a niche that is not 
except you have a niche that is basically what night maybe you're in a jollof rice cooking niche and that maybe that's what i don't know basically all i'm trying to say is this right if you want to niche down if you have a niche and you want to niche down go for it and do it very well you don't have to limit your audience to just nigerians because youtube is very vast you can be found out by anybody okay the next one is are there times you feel exhausted and don't feel like posting or no content to post how do you keep pushing um, personally, I take YouTube like as a job. Okay. I take YouTube as a job. So I go and research. If I don't have content, I go and research. I actually have a book, not even a book. I have a folder on my phone, my notes folder. Yeah. I go there and I write down as many ideas as I can think of. Okay. So the thing is this, right? When you, are, when you are in a good mood, right? When you are in a good mood, when you feel like posting, when you're in the mood, when you have content to post, try and push yourself to your limits as in push yourself to your breaking point create as much content as you can as you can create write down as much ideas as you can write down when you're in the spirit okay so that it will carry you when you're not in the spirit that's what helps me okay so like now today this is my third video i'm filming today i have filmed two instagram reels and this is my third video for today i'm still going to film another video like i'll continue a vlog okay because i'm in the mood i'm in the mood to do it even though i'm having toothache i'm in the mood to do it so i'm going to do it now then there are days where I don't just feel like it. All I'll be doing is posting the videos I already have or just rest because I already have videos I've posted, okay? So, yeah, um, that's how I keep pushing. I just see it as a job. You can't really give excuses when you have a job. If you don't want to be sacked, then you really cannot give excuses. So, what I do is I just push myself whenever I can. I push myself to the limit and whenever I can't. I know I can't. I know I've tried before, okay? So, that's how I keep pushing it. And sometimes going on YouTube, watch all kinds of people, all kinds of content, okay? I watch different people on YouTube, different kind of content. It keeps me inspired. I still have my favorite content, but I then add content that is there solely for inspiration solely to awaken my spirits you know to creating content you might find new ideas you might find new editing styles you can even find new content that you can copy new youtubers that you can you know copy not copy you can that will inspire you basically so yeah that's what i do when i you know I, i'm feeling exhausted the next one is hi ada i want to know at this stage of your youtube channel do you sometimes have a bad video i mean is there times when your views drop and your audience retention low? Do big YouTubers experience that at times? Um, when you see big YouTubers, gonna ask them. <laughs> because anyway, I'm just joking. Um, yes, it, I actually do have bad videos, okay? Or what I'll call less than optimal videos or less than less than ideal videos. I don't know. I still have them. I feel like everybody experiences them once in a while. The only thing is that as a YouTuber with less numbers, what is a bad video to a big youtuber might seem like a fantastic video to you for instance if mr beast if you guys know who mr beast is if mr beast has a video with 1 million views that's actually a bad video for mr beast okay because his videos are 30 something million 60 something millions blah 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 you know so if mr beast has a video with 1 million views that's actually a bad video for him but if i have a video with 1 million views you best believe i'm gonna throw a party I'm gonna throw a party. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to make it rain. I'm going to start having, I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to just go and give Thanksgiving in church. Okay. So at the end of the day, everybody experiences this. For instance, this video now, this particular video, I know for sure that when I post this video, I'm not going to get as many views as I normally would. I know that my audience retention is not going to be as high because many people click off after listening to the first two or three questions, okay? I know that for a fact, but it will not stop me from creating the content because even if it's 10 people that watch to the end, I am creating the video for that 10 people, okay? So at the end of the day, even though I am doing it for money's sake, I'm doing it because I love doing it, I am also doing it to help people as well. So whenever i just i just switch my goals depending on the video okay so that's how there's some videos i make solely for the purpose of making money there are some videos i make solely for the purpose of helping people there are some videos i make solely for the purpose of having fun okay so i just switch it up and that's what makes me keep going like for instance if i post this video today and the video thanks whatever on to the next the next video i might do it for the fun of it if it thanks whatever on to the next i do it for the, i do the next video because i want to help people and the video might do well okay so at the end of the day just switch things up and don't be so emotionally attached to your video views and video performance because you're going to get drained they're going to get tired they're going to get discouraged okay don't be so emotionally attached to it just keep on going i think i, I need to have a t-shirt 
maybe that will be my match. Just keep going. That's because I say it a lot. It's what I say every time. It's the same advice I give over and over again. Just keep going. So I'm going to have that t-shirt. Let me know if you guys like that idea. If it makes sense, I'll do it. Someone is asking, how do you manage or balance your physical and emotional stress with YouTube? Um, how I balance it is I just ask for help. Okay, I ask for help from my husband, from Elizabeth. I ask for help. I take out time for me and just do things that I love that are neither productive nor, you know, whatever. Yeah, activities that are just for the fun of it, right? When I go out and I want to have fun, I'm not carrying my camera, I'm not filming anything, I just have fun. What app do you use to edit and what camera do you use to film? I have all those details in my description box, but just know that uh, when it comes to quality of videos, it is not by lens. It's not by buying the biggest lens or the biggest camera. It is by learning the basics. It's by learning how to get the most from whatever you're using to film. So from your camera, from your phone, whatever you're using to film, you have to go and learn how to get the most from it, okay? So for instance, I have two lights on here. So you might go and buy this 30mm now and use it in a dark room and you're like, it's not the same thing with how others' videos add. And that's because there are so many variants, you know, making my own videos look better. So I'm in a room that is painted white, which helps with light. I have light on up up as in the ceiling lights are on i have two lights that are facing me so here is a very this room is currently quite bright even though outside the, i think it's about to rain itself so outside is gloomy so like for me and now for instance now i can tell that there's a difference in quality because i'm using basically just my light because outside is gloomy but if outside was very bright and you know natural light was coming in my video would look different as well so um, yeah, what was I saying? There's so many variants. There's so many variables when it comes to how your end product looks. Settings on your camera as well. I am using the manual settings. I'm adjusting my ISO. I'm adjusting my uh, whatever they call that one. There's so many things I'm adjusting here, okay, to make my videos look better. There's so many things involved in getting quality video, which is way more than just the kind of camera or kind of phone that you're using. So please and please and please. If you want to get quality camera, if you want to get quality, if you want to get quality videos, if you want to get quality audio, you need to go and learn these things. You cannot just be winging it all the time and think that you, you can't, you can't. You have to go and sit down, put in the work, invest in your craft and learn it, okay? Everybody started from scratch, okay? Every single person on YouTube started from scratch. Forget this one that you're saying, oh, NJ them has umbrella on YouTube. What is keeping NJ on YouTube is not Nello. It's not Nello's umbrella. It's because NJ is a content creator. I should tell her that some videos I see that NJ will post, I'm like, why have I never thought about this idea before? Okay, even her sister Nello that helped her is not even posting such videos, okay? And it's giving NJ views. So at the end of the day, Yes, you might have an umbrella that will help you to an extent, but what will keep you going on YouTube is you, whom is actually one of the recipients of this um, YouTube black phones, okay? How did she get there? It's not because CCM is her sister, right? Because if you say it because CCM is her sister, then who is my own sister that helps me? So at the end of the day, you yes, people can help you, people can shout you out, people can collab with you, people can, people can do all of that. What will keep you going, what will give you the big box on YouTube it's not people's help, okay? My videos with the highest views are not collabs, okay? I don't even have a collab that is in my top 20 highest views. That's the truth, okay? I've, I'm not, I don't have any video like that in my, on my channel. So, at the end of the day, that should tell you that it is not about, oh, I collab with this person, or this person helped me, or this person is my umbrella, or it's because of that person she's doing. It's not, it's not all of that. It is based on what you yourself post on youtube right okay so the last question for today is did you always know it was youtube you will do from your uni days no i did not know no i did not know no i did not know i did not even know what youtube was then i knew did i know about youtube when i was in investing i don't think i really knew about youtube maybe i did but maybe not not as i know youtube now i think i knew it by just one platform where people post videos but it wasn't um it wasn't something serious right i graduated uni in 2011 and then youtube was still not what it is right now okay so i had no idea i'm going to end up on youtube but thank god for youtube <laughs> anyway thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys were able to pick a thing or two if you are a small youtuber an upcoming youtuber a young youtuber a new youtuber i hope you are able to learn something um yeah let me know if you have more questions in the comment section i'll try and answer them in the comment section thank you so much for watching i need to go and pick my kids right now and i'll see you all in my next video bye guys